Congratulations on the book. Thank you. So um, it was really interesting for me to, to hear a little bit about your history. I, I uh, was interested to find out that you were a, a, a Trump supporter and you really uh, had a sort of a, a background uh, that uh, made you sort of sympathetic to um, to Trump initially. Talk a little bit about where you come from and how uh, how you approach uh law enforcement and and your feelings towards politics before January 6th? Uh, I mean, I was pretty apolitical. Um, I, I've always been that way. I, you know, I don't really think about uh, the elections or candidates until we're, you know, officially in election season. That's just not a big part of my life. Um, that being said, in 2016, I did vote for Donald Trump. Um, I was a single issue voter and my issue was law enforcement and my support for Donald Trump uh, came from uh, or in resistance to the rhetoric that I saw being used by a lot of Democrat politicians uh, that I thought was uh, dangerous uh, towards law enforcement officers. Uh, I think that a lot of that rhetoric uh, resulted in um you know, some of the violence that we experienced uh, as a profession uh, in the aftermath of 2015 and 2016, Ferguson, Missouri, and, and some of the other um, incidents. Uh, but there were, you know, police officers were, uh, were being assassinated. Uh, I saw it in Dallas, Texas. I saw it in Louisiana. I saw it in New York City. And I attended some of those officers' funerals. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, um, and obviously I regret the decision now, I, uh, I bought into a lot of Donald Trump's rhetoric uh, about his support for law enforcement. Yeah. So take me back to that morning. I mean, you uh, you weren't so aware of what we, what was what was happening that day. Um, and then you heard these reports of what was going on, uh, that there were officers in distress and you self-deployed to that's you, you went towards the fire. Um, what was going through your mind? Yeah. So, I mean, a little bit of background on, about me. I'm, I was a DC metropolitan police officer, uh, for 20 years prior to January 6th. I spent almost my entire career working in, uh, small specialized units. Um, the unit that I was in at the time focused on violent crime and narcotics trafficking. And so my day was, um, you know, supposed to involve, uh, an investigation into heroin trafficking in Washington, DC. I had set up an undercover buy and, um, I remember that morning, late, late morning, hearing reports from other officers that were. Uh, already at work about individuals that were uh, just outside the security perimeter of the Stop the Steal rally uh, that were in possession of firearms. And there were arrests being made, um, you know, for weapons offenses. And then I remember hearing officers uh, who were acknowledging that, you know, a large group of the um, participants in the rally had broken off and were headed uh, in the direction of the U.S. Capitol. It wasn't too much longer, I'd say maybe around 1 p.m., that I started hearing the first reports about, uh, you know, perimeters being breached, police perimeters, and officers being assaulted. It was at that point that I uh, made the decision that, you know, I was going to put a uniform on and deploy to the Capitol. Yeah, and what... When you arrived at the Capitol, I mean, it was just a very chaotic scene. What Describe kind of what you saw before you met the crowd there. Yeah, I remember uh, yeah, I approached from the south side of the Capitol. So from my perspective, I, I couldn't see um, the west, the lower West Terrace. Uh, so I had no idea how many people had amassed at the Capitol building. You know, from the south side, it, it looked as though there was maybe you know, a few hundred um, protesters, and they were kind of milling about, yelling, screaming, chanting. I mean, obviously, they were all dressed in you know political uh, attire, um, a lot of MAGA flags, Trump 2020, things like that. 
Um, but I didn't see any violence against police officers. But once I made my way into the Capitol, you know, I started seeing evidence of, um, of some of the assaults. I remember walking up the ramp that leads up to the southern entrance, and I saw blood splatter uh, all over the ground. Uh, once I got inside, I remember making my way along with my partner at the time, Jimmy Albright, to the uh, crypt area, which is the center of the Capitol, just beneath the uh, statuary hall. And I heard a distress call. Uh, we refer to them as a, a 1033 uh, coming from officers who were protecting the Lower West Terrace Tunnel. And so uh, Jimmy and I made our way to the Lower West Terrace Tunnel. Uh, and that was the first time that I encountered brutal hand-to-hand uh, -hand style combat. Uh, and it's the first time that I realized the totality of uh, what was happening, how many people were, uh, were trying to breach the Capitol and, and specifically how uh, intense the fighting was between these rioters and uh, law enforcement. Yeah. Now you're someone, as you said, you had a long career in law enforcement. You, you've dealt with violent people before. How was how different was this in order of magnitude to things that you had dealt with before in your life? I mean, there's absolutely nothing to compare it to uh, in my experience in policing. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of parallels that people will draw. Um, or people have drawn to some of the summertime riots. Um, I, I mean, I remember demonstrations as early as, you know, the early 2000s, and we had the, the IMF demonstrations in Washington, D.C. And, I mean, they involved large amounts of people. Uh, they involved violence uh, against law enforcement, destruction of property. But that being said, um, I would have always characterized those situations as controlled chaos. You know, I never felt as though, you know, law enforcement was in danger of losing the day. Um, and at the Capitol, uh, that was a distinct possibility. You know, we were fighting for our lives that day. Uh, it was not controlled chaos. It was just chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Then you get sort of sucked into the crowd. Describe exactly kind of what happened to you at that time. Yeah. So to, for those that don't know, um, the Lower West Terrace Tunnel is the tunnel way that the president elect walks out of um, onto the inaugural stage to take the oath of office. Uh, the tunnel way itself is maybe two, 250 feet long. And it's about as wide as four or five adults standing shoulder to shoulder. Uh, in that tunnel way, you had crammed, you know, about 40 police officers, uh, mostly from my former department, Metropolitan Police. And there was also uh, several U.S. Capitol Police officers there defending that tunnel way against thousands of uh, violent rioters. Um, this entranceway became a funnel uh, for those that were trying to get into the Capitol that were located out on the West Terrace. Um, during that battle, I uh, made my way to the front lines along with my partner, Jimmy. And um, at one point, I was pulled off of the police line uh, by an individual um, who was identified. His name is Albuquerque Cosper Head. Uh, he's since pled guilty. And um, he pulled me out into the crowd where I was uh, assaulted from every direction. I was struck with fists, uh, with metal objects. Uh, I was also struck with a uh, taser device on my neck uh, multiple times. Uh, as a result of that, uh, I did lose consciousness. And um, I also sustained a a traumatic brain injury and suffered a heart attack. It's incredible. How did you get rescued from that? Well, so at one point when I was out in the crowd and, and again, you know, to describe it, um, 
you couldn't slide a credit card between two people uh, either, either in that tunnel or out in that crowd. Um, I remember screaming out at one point that I have kids and, you know, there was, uh, there were some individuals in the crowd that, um, that offered, offered me assistance. Um, and eventually, uh, because of their efforts and also the, the officers who are in the tunnel, uh, were eventually able to, uh, to rescue me and, and bring me back into the tunnel. Uh, but at that point, I had lost consciousness.